Hi, Holy Frog here. So my last video got a lot of positive feedback, and I think people want to see more of that kind of content. So I decided to make another video, and this time I'm going to be talking a little bit more in depth about the Paladin class. And you know, people have been wondering, like, how does the Paladin tank? You see, you're not a warrior, you're not a druid, you have mana, and you don't have a taunt. Uh, it's like, you're out of mana, and then what do you do then? There's actually ways to deal with that, and not a lot of people like talk about this spec. There's not a lot of guides, it's not like the people playing Paladin tanks. Usually they have to figure like all this stuff out on their own. So what I want to do is I want to just discuss the spec a bit. And just give people some tools to like deal with different things. So, well, let's just start with the abilities. So, if you ever play the warrior, or you play the druid, you probably know that these classes have uh, defensive stance and they have bear form. And being in either of these stances are gonna increase all the threat you deal by uh, a certain amount. Now, Paladins has something similar and it's called Righteous Fury. And specking into improved Righteous Fury will increase the threat done by all our holy abilities by 90%. What I mean by holy abilities is anything that is from the holy spell school. So even though Righteous Fury says holy damage, it was recently figured out that this also applies to, say, blessings, casting your seals, and also heals, I believe. So now assuming you have Righteous Fury up, the key to holding aggro as a paladin is to manage your abilities properly. And because you have a mana bar, you have a finite resource that is quite hard to uh, replenish once depleted. You really want to think about in which order you use your abilities to minimize the amount of mana spent and maximize the amount of threat you do. So some of the ways you can restore your mana as a production paladin. Obviously mana potions, dark runes, mp5 gear. But in my opinion, like the most important abilities that you do have is your Seal of Wisdom and your Judgment of Wisdom. And how this works is like, Judgment of Wisdom, when applied to a mob, has a chance to restore mana when you hit the mob. Seal of Wisdom works the same way, in which it restores mana when you hit something with a seal up. And by using both of these, you can actually regenerate a substantial amount of mana. And I'm gonna show this on this pack, in which I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna judge Wisdom on this mob, keep a seal of wisdom up, and I'm just gonna hold aggro using consecration and holy shield. And as you can see, if you watch my mana, I actually regenerate quite a lot of mana just from like hitting this. And a key to pulling quickly in a dungeon and minimize drinking is that you want your judgment of wisdom up as long as possible on the pack. So that usually means asking your group to kill the target you have your judgment on last and kill the other targets first. And I'm gonna be demonstrating this later, but for now, we're gonna go over something else the Paladins have a problem with. And that's the lack of a taunt ability. And especially in the Fireman dungeon, there's multiple bosses and there's trash that will occasionally drop your threat. And without a taunt, it's pretty difficult to get them back. So my approach for this guy is I'm gonna judge Crusader on him to increase the holy damage I deal. And I will also increase my threat. As we can see here, he drops my threat. So what I do is I cast Blessing of Protection on the healer, because he's the one I got aggro. The mage is luckily ice block here. But what's normally gonna happen is you want some DPS to just tank the hits. And I'm gonna do what I'm doing now, which is I'm just gonna, well, keep healing the guy that has aggro. Like in this case, it's not possible for me to get the boss back. Other bosses you actually can get back. It's uh, really different from boss to boss how their threat mechanics work. And in some cases it's simply enough to uh, do a lot of damage to get the mob back. But uh, obviously like for bosses like this, there's nothing you can really do. And you just have to play around that by using your other abilities such as the heals. So back to what I was explaining before. It's like if you want to pull quickly in a dungeon. Really the key is to keep your judgement up as long as possible on the target that is not nuked down fast. So I'm gonna do this in this room in which I'm gonna mark a skull. 
I'm gonna just use Exorcism for high initial threat. Judge Wisdom on the other mob and attack it with Seal of Wisdom while keeping my Holy Shield up and my Consecration down. And with the kind of DPS people do at this stage of the game, usually that's enough to hold aggro on the skull. So what I usually do is like, I will maybe Exorcism it again, just the whole threat. You just have to play it like by how the encounter goes basically, by how much damage people do. As you can see, I barely lost any mana on this pull, doing it like that. And I held aggro just fine. And if you do this, when it's like, yeah, a lot of pack after pack after pack, it really does help minimizing the amount of the time you spend drinking. And it makes the run go a lot faster and a lot smoother, and you have to wait for uh, the Paladin tank to drink a lot less. Which people really appreciate. So, for this boss... Like with bosses with adds, what I like to do is I like to throw a dense dynamite just for the initial threat. And the strategy I use, and this is something I use for regular mob packs as well, is that I will judge a wisdom on the first mob and the seal of righteousness. And I will just auto attack that mob until it's about to die. At which point I use the seal I already have active, judge the next mob to be killed and then switch to seal of wisdom. That will allow me to re regenerate some more mana. And when the cross dies, I'm going to judge the wisdom I already have active on the boss. And then switch to Seal of Righteousness. At which point I will just maintain Holy Shield, use Exorcism if I need to. And just keep judging the seal once it's about to expire. And this should be more than enough to hold aggro on the boss. And what's actually going to happen when I do this is on regular mob packs, it will reduce the amount of mana I spend significantly by always reusing the seal you already have active whenever you target switch. And that speeds everything up. Now the thing with your judgment of wisdom is like it's not a uh, proc per minute, it's not based on uh, your weapon speed. It's just the same chance to restore mana regardless of how fast you're attacking. So like, my preferred choice of weapons for a balance tank would be a fast weapon. So, if you can see in this video, I'm using a 1.5 speed Flurry Axe, which is like my favorite weapon to use. And what this does is like, on targets that are judged with wisdom, when you attack fast and you get the extra attack procs, you're actually going to be restoring a lot more mana than if you say you stay 2.5 speed or uh, even a Thrash Blade, which is like 2.7. And the thing with fast weapons as well is uh, your Seal of Righteousness ability. Again, your main threat generating ability on a single target. It actually adjusts its damage based on how fast you're attacking. So a slow weapon is going to hit for more. And a fast weapon is going to hit for less. But on average, it's going to be doing the same DPS. So what that means is like my 1.5 speed flurry is going to still be doing the same threat per second as a, a, a 3.8 speed Arcanite Reaper. If I was using that. So it actually doesn't matter what you use, and a faster weapon actually becomes better once you have more spell power. Because Seal of Righteousness scales at 10% of your spell power regardless of weapon speed. So, like for tanking in general, like I would always use a fast weapon. And especially in dungeons, it makes a huge difference because your main concern there is to reduce the amount of mana you spend and maximize the amount of mana you restore. And a fast weapon really goes a long way towards doing that. But of course the weapon is not the only thing you need as a Paladin tank. The overall gear you use is also very important. So Paladins actually have a few pretty wonky mechanics. Which is mainly Redoubt and Reckoning. Now like the general idea behind the tank is like you want to take as little damage as possible. So most people have probably heard that you know if you play a warrior for example you want to stack defense, and they think the same thing applies to Paladin. Uh, I disagree. Like, we have Redoubt, which is like, after you get crit, you gain 30% block chance for your next 5 hits against you. Or for the next 5 blocks. And Reckoning is the same way, like, you get crit, and you gain 1 extra attack on your next hit. Which doesn't actually do that, it more like, as long as you're actively swinging on the target, when you get crit, what's gonna happen is you attack instantly. So, like how I prefer to gear up for Feynman's, 
is I will not care about defense that much. Like, in this video I have like 30 defense on my gear. That's what I tank dungeons with. And that'll actually mean I do get crit a lot. Which increases my block chance. And that allows me to get more holy shield charges off. It allows me to get more blessing of sanctuary charges off. And it gives me more reckoning procs, which again, like, increases my attack speed. And makes me do more threat, restore more mana. And, like, so far in Classic, i am not tanked anything in the 5-man that does enough damage that I'm actually gonna die if I get crit. So, as long as you have some defense, like, I think 30, 35, maybe 40 defense is, like, fine. That allows me to still do pretty huge pulls, and I have never died, like, unless I pull way too much or the healer is just, like, hit 62 hours ago. So instead, what I aim for as a Paladin tank is like, I will do gear that has stamina, I will do gear that has intellect, which allows me to cast more spells, and I like to prioritize armor as well. Like in my current setup, I'm using two-piece light forge, which actually has a 200 armor bonus, and I prefer to use gear that has like added armor. So there's a few pieces here and there that has like additional armor on top of the regular armor you get from just normal plate. And if those pieces have like stamina on them, like I prefer to use that. It's really good for you in my opinion. Because then you can actually take the damage from getting crit. And you're gonna get reckoning procs, you're gonna get readout procs. And it's just overall gonna increase the efficiency, like how fast you're able to pull. How much threat you're able to output. And that speeds up the run. Assuming the healer can handle it of course. But, like, if you were to say, do massive pulls, like, you were doing a dungeon and you decided to, like, pull five packs of mobs, I would probably go for more heavy defense. And same if the healer was, like, under geared. So if your healer has no bonus heal and he just hit 60 the same day, just use more defense. You always want to adjust, like, your gear according to the needs of the group, what you're tanking, like, how much you can pull, how fast your DPS is, it really depends. But so far in Classic, I've not needed more than 30-40 defense, like for anything I've tanked. So other stats that we can use is spell power. And a lot of people, you know, they'd be playing Protection Paladin in say TBC, where spell power, that was like the thing you went for. You wanted as much as possible for threat. In Classic it's kind of the same, but the difference is we don't really scale that well with it. So, just as an example, like, Seal of Righteousness scales at 10% of spell power. Judgment of Righteousness scales with 50%, which is okay. Holy Shield scales with 5%, and Consecration is like 4.2% per tick. Or 33% uh, over the entire 8 ticks. So, we do scale with it, just not that much. But of course, like, later on, we're gonna be able to get significant amounts of it. Like, when we get our tier 2 sets, when we get spell power off pieces. On this stage of the game, I'm using about 50 spell power. And that still increases my Seed of Righteousness damage by 5. And then multiplied by Righteous Fury with a 1.9 multiplier. It does add decent threat. So, it's an okay stat to use. And there's several pieces where you know you can get it without sacrificing too many other stats. One example of this would be the Cyclopean Band from BRD. It has stamina, it has intellect, it has spell power, it has some strength on it, it's a very well-rounded item. I also use Bravid Reed because, well, it's quite a significant amount of spell power for one trinket slot. And at this stage of the game, you know, there's not that much else to use as a trinket. You don't have uh, the Onyxia Trinket, which I don't really recommend you get anyway. I think getting the Onyxia Necklace is a better choice, but that's like a conversation for another time. Um, but yeah, there are good spell power pieces to get on this stage of the game. Like, where you don't have to sacrifice too many other stats. And one big one in particular is the Lightforge set. Now the sixth set of Lightforge, that's a proc. Chance on hit increases your spell power by 95. And the proc chance of that is actually really high. So I do advise using that set if you have it. 
and then just fill in like your other pieces with uh, some defense gear, like your death bone if you can get that. And some off pieces like the Noggle Ring from BRD. And some high stamina, high armor pieces in the other slots. The thing with playing a tank, and that goes for paladins, druids, warriors, even shaman tanks if anyone plays that. It's like there's no gear set that works for everything. You should always have multiple pieces of gear, and you should understand your class well enough to know when to switch out. There's pulls where you want to go more heavy on defense, there's pulls where you want to go more heavy on spell power, more heavy on offensive stats, there might be even be pulls where you don't even want to use a shield. And this is just something you have to like play around with. Try different things, try different setups. A return damage set, for example, with uh, the Crest of Retribution from Stratholm with a shield spike on it would be very good if you were doing, say, Stratholm Living Side. You were clearing all those huge, like, non elite undead packs on the way to the cathedral. But it would not be something you would want to wear if you were tanking, uh, say, Upper Blackrock Spire, and you were tanking those big dragons at the end. Because they hit really hard, and for those you may want to just go more heavy on defense, more heavy on stamina, make it easier for your healers. It really just depends. So for now I'm just gonna end this video here, and you guys, please let me know what you think of this video, and if there's anything in particular you want me to make a video on next, let me know in the comments. And thank you for watching!